as you will have guessed from the, the lengthy first part of the service, today we are observing the Feast of Three Martyrs. Uh, tomorrow is the Feast of Edmund of East Anglia, who was an early king of, of, not really of England, of a piece of southern England, uh, who got into a battle with the Vikings when they came trying to take over that territory, lost the battle and was killed. So he was a political leader who was killed for political reasons in a way, but he was Christian and his opponents were not. Important to know also. Then there's Cecilia on Friday. St. Cecilia who, and I say this so many times, I'm becoming tired of saying it, you're getting tired of hearing it. We really know nothing about her. For reasons that are very obscure, maybe no more than someone once wrote a poem about her that said that she sang in her heart when she got married, she is the patron saint of musicians, church musicians particularly. And so, at least since the 1500s, she has been the person we think of when we think of singing in church. But all we really know is that she was a young woman who got married, who managed to convert her husband and his brother. They were martyred for their faith. She buried them, then she was arrested, converted the people who arrested her. They tried to kill her once, it didn't work. They tried to kill her a second time, that didn't work either. Eventually they succeeded, but all we really know was that she ultimately was a martyr for her faith. And then Saturday is Clement, one of the early popes. The first pope, it seems, who tried to do anything outside of his own diocese. You re heard in the collect that he was helping the church at Corinth get their act together. Apparently, the church at Corinth always needed help getting their act together. <clears throat> in any case, here was the, uh, the bishop of one diocese talking to people in another part of the church to say, well, let me help you out here. So it's something about having our connections across the boundaries we would otherwise draw but between ourselves as Christians. Again, someone who apparently was killed as a martyr for his faith at a time when being a senior church leader was itself a fairly hazardous occupation. So three different saints, all martyrs, all of whom share one thing in common, which is that for some reason, whatever they were doing in their life, the world smacked back at them. And so for that reason, I think they are useful to us when we think about what it means to live a Christian life. Now, I, I, I hasten immediately to say that I am not advocating martyrdom for anyone. It's not something you should go looking for. And I don't think that any of these people necessarily went looking for it. But it is a good reminder to us that whenever we do anything, however small, that interferes with or even just irritates the way that the world does business, the world will notice and will smack back in some way. It doesn't even have to be something that is official. It, it can be anything in the way that we live our lives. If it doesn't look like what people were expecting, if it doesn't look like what people want, if it in some way could be taken as and even very mild criticism of the way that the rest of the world does business, the way that it, it values the lives of human beings, the way it values their labor, the way it values their, their right to express themselves. The world will find a way to try to silence them and silence us. There are many small martyrdoms. You don't have to be killed for your faith. There are all sorts of ways that we are martyred as we go through our life of faith. At the same time, a key thing that, that brings us back to what it means to be faithful people is that none of these people is remembered particularly for what he or she did. It was only by being martyred, by the fact that the world smacked back at them, that they are remembered by the church at all. You may know that in the early church, almost all the saints were martyrs. They were the first category of people who were seen as in some way important to remember as we went go through our own Christian lives. The reason for that, I think, is because it points us away from ourselves and toward God. If, in fact, what matters is not the, the, the good stuff we're doing, no, no doubt, all three of these people did good things in their lives, we just don't know what they were, for the most part. What we know is what happened to them because of what they did. That to me, it, it, perhaps in a somewhat indirect way, is a useful reminder that it's not about how we earn our way into heaven. It's never about whether we have saved up enough chips. 
that we're on the correct side of the line when we get up to the head of the line in, at the gates of heaven, but rather what God is doing through us, what God does because of us. Now, it's important to point out that in none of these three stories was there a particularly happy ending. It wasn't like as a result of the martyrdom of any of these three people, any, any justice came into the world suddenly because of it. It wasn't like after Cecilia was martyred, the population of Rome rose up in their indignation and overthrew the government and replaced it with something that would not martyr those who simply wanted to practice their faith. So it's not like there's, there's an immediate turnaround and, and suddenly there's something to show for it. It's all in God's time and in God's way. Noting that now, 2,000 plus years later, here we are remembering these three people. So... Martyrs, I think, remind us that as we go through our lives, we may face opposition, but ultimately it is God's victory that matters. So we've got to keep doing what we're doing, have our patience, have our faith, have our willingness to be misunderstood and trusted in God's time and in God's way. Something will come of it that is part of God's plan. So Edmund, Cecilia, and Clement, we give thanks for them for their lives, for their witness, for all that they have to show us and teach us about what it means to live faithful lives. Amen.